Can you tell people what you do for a living? Здравствуйте, everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, I do politics uh, in the sense of practical politics. That is to say, uh, whenever you see someone shilling on the internet, someone like me in the background has wrote has written those talking points. That's essentially what I do. That's what the political operatives do. Yeah. Do you think that the uh, green energy push and uh, all of this support for environmentalism is going to die out in the future? Depends on what you mean by future. Near future. No, not in the near future. How, how is it possible with an energy crisis that people still support uh, measures that are going to increase Because their people are not stupid, people are fucking stupid. That, Do they not make the connection? No, they... no. Uh, most people have no idea Is how... it put in gas hikes? Uh... No, no, no. Ideology? That... Not, 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 not just that. I mean, that's a very small part of it. Uh, you have to remember, the vast majority of the population has no idea uh, why, when they push on the switcher, the light goes on. It's the magic in the walls. Yes. They, they don't understand how that happens. That's just reality. That's why I'm saying people are not stupid, people are fucking stupid. That, that's just how it works. And it has always been true. It's not a new, a new phenomenon of modernity. And, no, no, no. It has always been. You think in the 1700s, most people understood uh, why they live in this principality and not that one? And No. <laughs> it has always been the case that people are, most people are in the dark about various fundamentals of their societies. Uh, but at least in the past, they had the relatively more responsible elites uh, to manage these things. Today, our elites are just as honkish as most of the people. So as a result, that's why I don't think support for environmentalism will die out in the near future. Eventually it will, either through technological advancement, various adaptations and whatnot, or through the realization that, look, this is just not going to work. Uh, but it's going to take a lot more time because it's not an idea whose time has come. So you think that when people are going to get their gas bills, especially in Germany, um, they're still going to vote green and they're still going to vote to... Uh, shut down all of their energy independence. Yes. I mean, they're going to have to find a way to uh, replace those gas pipes. Mm -hmm. I think they, they will still vote green because the Green Party in Germany is, um, is a very special cookie. Uh, as opposed to most of the green activists, the Green Party is not pro-Russian. It's for pedophile, but it's not for Russia. Yeah, they had a scandal there. Um, multiple pedophilia multiple. scandal. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, there, the biggest there's... one was in the 80s, but has several other smaller they, they ones. They even apologized recently. Uh -huh. uh, they, they have like um, a scandal involving kindergartens. They which... had a network of kindergartens that would deliver children for pedophiles, yes. And it lasted for more than a decade. And there was another uh, interesting case, even uh, Tucker covered it a couple of years ago. Apparently a German psychologist with the blessing of the government was uh, pairing children with pedophiles because mm -hmm. according to him, uh, they love children. Yeah, it was paid for by the Berlin Senate, yes. And uh, that came out and almost no outrage. Like that's mm -hmm. what shocked me. It's not the fact that it happened, like mm -hmm. corruption exists everywhere, mm -hmm. but the fact that the public was like, oh, well, okay, you know, this is interesting. And then they moved on. Yes, because the German society is um, much more tolerant of degeneracy than other societies. Uh, the, the mistake that uh, so many people make is to judge other societies by their own standards. Yeah, the Soviet and... Union banned homosexuality everywhere and brothels, mm -hmm. except for East Germany. Yes. Uh, like in Romania, you'd go to prison for if... brothers and for, for... For, for homosexuals, yes. And even in Romania, it depends on what kind of homosexuals. Yeah. The homosexuals in the uh, upper echelons of the party, they would still... Well, you yeah, know, like, uh, of course, the, under communism, there was one rule for the plebs and one rule of for course. the elites. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the fact that it was criminalized in the code, like when we joined the European Union, one of the first things that we were forced to do was to abolish mm -hmm. the law against... Yeah, the Article 200 that criminalized homosexuality was abolished in 2002. We mm -hmm. joined the Evo Soyuz in 2007. But yes, now to be fair, by the time it was formally abolished, it was already uh, not yeah. applied uh, for several years. It basically stopped being seriously enforced after the fall of communism. The commies were much more serious. You know, you know they put it under rape after that? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so rape in Romania was uh, the uh, unconsensual act of sex between uh, two people, or the consensual act of sex between. Uh, yeah, there was two a short. Of... Yeah, I know, I know, mm -hmm. I know. It was uh, one of the attempts by the um, well, essentially by the National Socialists, the post-communists, uh, to preserve some of their previous regulations, which are of course ridiculous because they were very difficult to enforce in a free society. Right in communism, it was easier. But yes, in uh, East Germany, p pornography was everywhere. 
it was there was such thing as state sponsored pornography really? in DDR yes and only in DDR uh, everywhere else no because, how did that look like uh, well it wasn't necessarily different uh, it had uh, you know collectivist elements so you know they would make a lot of or orgy kind of porn uh, much more than West Germany but all of course West Germany also produced a lot of that but at least in West Germany it was decided by the market so you know mm -hmm. a new studio would show up uh, if they couldn't sell enough tapes Do you they think they go... had the committee and they decided what the collective they did. what the people want to see and they, they... did yes really yeah no the, the, that, that's not a, a belief you can check it out the archives of the uh, uh, of the former censorship department are quasi opened. Essentially, you go to Berlin and you file a FOIA request and ask to see the um, some of the transcripts of the meetings, and you can read it for yourselves. And it's, there are, there have been academic works about that on how these things were decided, but most of them are in German, and I don't speak. That's fascinating. I don't speak good enough German to uh, to tell you more. But yes, yeah, there was a committee, just like it was in every other communist country. But what I'm saying is that the German society is a bit more tolerant on some things that we would, everyone else in Europe would find absolutely haram. So that's why the Green Party managed to survive even with all those scandals. Not that only they survived, they after they, they flourished. They abolished, after they apologized, they even uh, flourished. And uh, the reason this was a scandal to begin with is because they're the only ones who created networks of kindergartens mm -hmm. to feed them to pedophiles and... Um, um, and in such a broad... And this is proven, right? Like, yeah, it's, not, it's it, not a conspiracy theory or... Well, no. you can read it in English on the website of the uh, German uh, newspaper Bild. There's a, a three-part article, more than 30,000 words with pictures and details and how it started, Jesus. how it... Uh, yeah. Because it's so difficult to believe. I mean, if this happened in our country, if a political party would, would be even accused of something like this, they would be influenced in the election, let alone prove it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it's just unfathomable. Yeah, it is. But then again, we find this, uh, you know, we, we do have our own idi idiosyncrasies. So, for instance, in Romania, uh, when it comes to teenage sex, we in Romania are far more tolerant than the Anglo-Saxons. Right? Uh, in Romania, but teenagers usually start their sex lives at 14 or 15, which is illegal everywhere in the United States. But here it's tolerated, permitted. Well, the age of consent here. Officially it's, it's 15, uh, yes, yeah. but uh, but it, can do, it goes as low as 12 if, the, if both part partners are minors. Mm. And since most of the teenage sex happens between teenagers, even I, I think there's still like social stigma, like even if it's a like, there's uh, social uh, stigma if pregnancy happens. Without pregnancy, there is no. Social I don't know. Stigma. I think if a 16 year old girl goes out and dates a 32 year old man, like there will be social stigma towards the depends. Man. Depends. Uh, depends on a lot of factors. It depends who the 16 year old is, who the 32 year old is. Is uh, it's a bit more complicated. The thing is that there is an avenue to tolerance to that. Uh, whereas in, uh, in the, in the Anglo-Saxon world, that's regarded as absolutely haram. And um, uh, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, let's look at the consequences. Uh, you, you don't go out in, enough, but you should see um, Americans aged 22, 23, 24 year old when they escape to Eastern Europe. They behave like <laughs> They drink way more than they can afford. Uh, physically, not financially. They drink too much. They're very degenerate, and they uh, because why? Because they experience what we do in adolescence. They do it in adulthood. Whereas in Eastern Europe, we prefer to experiment things in adolescence, precisely because there are no consequences. Mm -hmm. I mean, what happens if you end up at home very drunk at the age of fifteen? Well, worst thing that can happen is your peers may mock you because you puked on the street. That's kind of the worst thing that can happen. Whereas if you do exactly the same thing at age 27, you may lose your job, you may bring, uh, you may bring disrespect to your community. That, that is a very good point of view, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, we are also tolerant with things that other societies may find absolutely haram.